Hi. Today I'll be walking you through how to install the Stereosol System G5. This installation video is broken down into several phases. Phase 1. Unpacking and inventory. Phase 2. Mounting. Phase 3. Cartridges. Phase 4. Source water and tubing. Phase 5. Powering up, programming the touchscreen, and filling the tanks. Initial installation considerations. Please read the entire owner's manual and watch the installation video before proceeding with the installation and initial operation. Please keep the installation guide and owner's manual handy for future reference and ensure anyone responsible for operation and maintenance of the system is familiar with all details contained in this manual. Always follow local plumbing codes and municipal regulations. We recommend a certified Stericil installer, professional technician, or plumber familiar with dental offices perform the installation since interfacing with a cold water line and drain is involved. The initial setup can take up to three to five hours depending on customer specifications. The complete installation will require up to two days to complete. Phase one, unpacking and inventory. Start by unpacking and verifying the contents of each box and be sure to review the user manual. Please return the warranty registration form via mail or register online immediately upon installation. Next, gather up the list of required tools. Phase two, mounting. The Stericil System G5 can be installed nearly anywhere in the typical dental, medical, lab, or hospital setting, typically near a faucet and sink. The system and tanks are designed to fit under a countertop, but can be installed anywhere there's a quality cold water supply and drain connection. In this section, we'll go over mounting the system, optional pre-filter, optional booster pump, water storage tanks, power adapter, and faucets. All external components like tanks, faucets, and drains should be positioned no more than 50 feet from the system to maintain consistent water pressure during use. The G5 can be mounted in one of three ways, an articulating arm wall mount, a sliding mount inside a cabinet, or a static wall mount. In this demonstration, we'll use the static wall mount method. The system weighs approximately 50 pounds when filled with water. For this reason, confirm the location of studs for proper anchoring. Using a stud finder, locate a stud and mark the placement of the first pilot hole. Affix the unit to the wall by sliding the keyholes on the back plate over your mounting hardware. Install the remaining tacking bolts to the four bottom holes to complete the mounting. Peripheral components. Depending on the customer's specific configuration, you may have optional components such as the pre-filter and booster pump plumbed between the municipal source and the red source port on the system. The order of components starting from the source hookup, even if some are missing, will be pre-filter, booster pump, and then system port. Be sure to take this into consideration when you prepare the space. Pre-filter kit, this is optional. Start by preparing the mounting space. Account for two inches of clearance at the bottom for future filter replacements. Thread each end of the one quarter inch connectors with thread tape and screw the connector into the pre-filter. Unscrew the top cap and insert the unwrapped white micron filter. Screw on the white cap. Use four screws on the gray silver bracket on top of the white cap. Line up and level the bracket to the desired position and mark the holes. Drill the four pilot holes. Line up the bracket and screw in all four screws. Mount the filter bracket to the wall between the source water junction and the booster pump. Booster pump, this is optional. If a booster pump is included, start by removing the rubber plugs from the in and out ports. Place or mount the booster pump on the wall with the included hardware. Set the pressure switch aside as you'll need it later. Water storage tanks. 
The standard G5 configuration includes a 4-gallon reverse osmosis tank and a 2-gallon dental tank. These sizes may differ with customer specifications and needs. As a default, the RO storage tank will be the larger of the two. Let's start by removing the white cap from the RO tank. Using thread tape, wrap the threads on each bladder tank. Take the 3 8 inch valve and hand tighten it to the larger RO tank. Do not over tighten this valve. Turn the blue valve 90 degrees to close it. Repeat this process with the 1 quarter inch valve for the dental water tank. On the tanks, you'll find a plastic blue cap. Rotate it counterclockwise to remove it, exposing the Schrader valve. Verify the pressure is between 8 and 10 psi. If they're not within that range, you'll need to add or remove air with your low volume air pump. Your tanks are now ready for plumbing. Faucets. The bottle fill configuration includes a white autoclave faucet and a chrome dental water faucet. Dental water is always plumbed to the chrome faucet. The faucet can be mounted on a countertop or on a wall using an optional remote mounting bracket. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll go over countertop mounting. Do not use the compression fittings provided, throw them away. Instead, use the provided push-in connector. Start by drilling a 1 half inch hole at the desired location. Take your faucet assembly and run the smaller black rubber gasket on the threaded tube so it sits between the assembly and the faucet disc. Insert the faucet assembly through the hole. On the underside of your countertop, run the black plastic spacer through the threaded end, insert the lock washer, and secure the entire assembly with the nut provided. Do not over tighten this nut. Wrap the threads of the faucet assembly with thread tape and thread the faucet connector on the bottom assembly. The faucet is now ready for tubing. Phase three, cartridges. Before you install each cartridge, remove the yellow cap from the top and write the date with a permanent marker. Start by inserting the cartridges from left to right beginning with stage one. Please note there are two stage four cartridges. They'll both be positioned interchangeably in ports four and five. Please note the size of your stage five cartridge will vary depending on its capacity rating. Once all the cartridges are installed, remove the brine plug from the bottom of the stage three cartridge and insert the brine tube into the bottom of stage three. Blank cartridge. The blank cartridge is essential for troubleshooting possible blockages inside the system. Mount the clip on the wall near the system and place the cartridge in the clip. Phase four, source water and tubing. In phase four, you'll be linking the peripheral components with tubing and preparing the municipal source line to supply the G5 with water. Source water connection. Source water will be split from the main valve via a supply stop extended T. Turn off the water on the supply line. Remove the existing hose and install the supply stop extended T on the cold water supply. Hot water should not be used to feed the Sterosol System G5. Tighten the T with a wrench. For now, the main valve will remain closed. Tubing. Be sure to factor any movement in the system into the tubing length so as to not put tension on system ports or components. To ensure a seamless connection and prevent leaks, make all tubing cuts as straight and clean as possible. If your system includes an optional wand, please reference the owner's manual. Source water in. Insert the quarter inch tubing into the supply stop extended T. The other end of this tubing will be run to the source in on the pre-filter. As with all quick connect fittings, you'll simply push the tubing into the female end until it stops. Once this connection is in place, make a cut and install the inline ball valve. Make sure the valve remains in the closed position. Now run the line from the out port on the pre-filter to the in port on the booster pump. Then run tubing from the out port on the booster pump to the source in port on the system. Once this connection is in place, make a cut and install an inline ball valve after the booster pump. Dental port. Run a quarter inch line from the blue dental port on the system to the dental water faucet. D-tank port. Now run quarter inch tubing from the blue D-tank port on the system to the quarter inch tank ball valve on the dental water storage tank. Autoclave port. 
Now run quarter inch tubing from the green autoclave port on the system to the white autoclave faucet. Drain port. If you have a floor drain that's accessible, you can always run tubing straight from the black drain port on the system to the floor drain. If not, you'll need to install the drain saddle valve on an existing drain pipe. Start by marking the drain pipe where you intend to drill your quarter inch hole. The DSV will need to be before or after the P-Track. Attach the gasket and mount the saddle valve with the provided nuts and bolts to the drain pipe. Once the valve is properly mounted, remove the gray collet from the saddle valve and drill through the hole on the saddle valve into the drain pipe. Be sure not to drill through the other side of the drain pipe. Then reinsert the collet. Clear any metal shavings from the hole to finish the installation. RO tank port. Run a 3 8 inch line from the RO tank port on the system to the 3 8 inch tank ball valve on the RO water storage tank. The pressure switch for the booster pump must be installed on this section of tubing. Make sure you have enough length on the power cable to reach between the pump itself and the section of tubing with which you intend to merge the pressure switch. You'll now be left with a yellow RO port. If no auxiliary reverse osmosis water will be used, then this port should remain plugged. Phase five, powering up, programming the touchscreen, and filling. Powering up the system. Power adapter. Select a location within six feet of the outlet and ensure the power cord can reach both the outlet and the system without tension on the cable. When you plug the unit in, the touchscreen will power on and you'll be brought to the home screen. Programming the touchscreen. Start by bringing up the details view by touching either the desired stage number from the home screen or select the stages tab from the bottom row. Stage one's lifespan is for 364 days. If the counter is not reading 364 days, you'll select replace component. Select stage one from the drop-down menu and hit replace. Stage two's lifespan is based on liters processed and is effective up to 9,463 liters. If the counter is not reading 9,463 liters, you'll select Replace Component, choose Stage 2 from the drop-down menu, and touch Replace. Stage 3's lifespan is based on either a 364-day count or the TDS water quality coming off it. If the counter on Stage 3 is not reading 364 days, select Replace Component, then touch Stage 3 from the drop-down menu, and touch replace. Stage four's lifespan is a function of water quality. The alarm will sound if water quality reaches above 10 parts per million on the lead cartridge. No resetting is required upon initial installation. The UV light's life is based on both light intensity and a 364 day count. To reset the light monitor, select the UV lamp tab on the bottom row and then touch replace component. Stage 5's lifespan is based on a liter count. Each Stage 5 is marked with its liter capacity. From the Stage 5 details screen, verify that your maximum capacity matches the capacity printed on the cartridge. If not, reset the count to the correct number. If your configuration includes an optional pre-filter, you'll need to set the reminder for the appropriate interval. Please consult your Stericel Water Compliance Specialist to confirm your replacement interval. Filling the storage tanks. Now you can open the source water valve at your municipal supply. If you have a pre-filter, check that any shutoff valves in front of or behind the filter housing are in the open position. To open the RO reserve and dental water tanks, turn the tank ball valve knob in line with the tubing. You can visually confirm water is flowing freely to the booster pump at this point. Once you have water flowing to the booster pump, you can plug it in and verify it's working. The RO and dental tanks will slowly begin to fill. At the white autoclave faucet, open the valve and start running water. At this point, you should be looking for leaks anywhere in the system and connecting tubing. Once you have water at the faucet and confirm there are no leaks, close the faucet. Depending on your tank sizes, it can take up to 12 hours for your tanks to fill. Please be aware, you'll not have adequate water pressure for normal use until the tanks have filled. Connecting to the network. If you plan to connect the system to the internet via an ethernet cable, you'll need to locate the wall socket and ensure your cable meets the length requirements or be in range of the router for Wi-Fi. From the Home tab on the touchscreen, select the Settings tab, then touch the Network button. 
Go to Network Interface and select a method of connection from the drop-down menu. Select Scan and then touch SSID to populate the list of possible networks. From the list, select the appropriate network and enter in the password if necessary, and just hit Connect. Once you're connected, you'll want to select Save Setting. The installation of the Stericel System G5 is not complete until the PC app has been installed on an office computer. Once downloaded, the app will monitor live diagnostics such as cartridge life, water usage, water pressure, and many other maintenance features. To install the PC app, go to www.stericil.com slash stericil dash system dash G5. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to call us at 719-622-7200 or schedule a visit with your local Stericil Dental Waterline Specialist.